Welcome to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group, bringing you interviews with Colorado's best real estate and mortgage professionals, empowering you to understand the current trends in the housing market so you can make the American dream your reality. Enjoy today's episode. Well, it's a great day in Colorado, and welcome to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast. Today, we have with us James Scott Harden, who's president of Able Financial with Abby Harden as well. Welcome, guys. Hey, thank well, thank you very much. Hey, I'm looking forward to learning from you because a husband and wife team is always awesome to see how you guys are serving your clients and working together. And we don't need to get into the crazy stories that I know that there are, but give us a little bit of background on how you got into the mortgage industry to begin with and then uh, what you when you decided to start your own firm. Yeah, um, well, I, not strangely enough, we've been in business since 1997, wow. uh, which you know, basically 25 years ago. And prior to that, uh, you know, I was a loan officer with a good friend of mine at the time. Um, you know, she's with a company called Placer Financial back in back in the early days. And initially, we started off doing what were called Title Ones, which were government backed second mortgages. And basically, we kind of just grew the business from that aspect of it of doing second mortgages and home improvement loans to individuals doing first mortgages. And we just kind of grew the business from that aspect since 97. And so we are a Colorado S corporation and uh, been serving the state of Colorado for 25 years, but currently we're in 17 states that you can find on our website, uh, www.ablefinancialinc.com. And, uh, you know, should there be someone that's moving out of state or moving in from one of those states, we have business partners throughout. So. Um, that's that's kind of where we started at. Yeah, kind of started off with, you know, ooh, this this is one little uh, leg of the financial puzzle that we're going to focus on and then start adding on, adding on, adding on. And certainly the mortgage industry is um, changing and has changed over the years. What were some of the things that you experienced through the years to, that made you go, oh, you know what, we need to add this piece into the puzzle or, you know, maybe hard money loans, maybe, you know, FHA loans. How did that um, start building uh, momentum that way? Uh, I'll jump in here on this one, Mike. Um, so my background was in private banking and, you know, I saw a very big need for some more creative programs that were more focused on self-employed individuals, um, people that just had that one off the regular loan type scenarios. Uh and we had the platform was able to go out into the market. Um, James did a great job sourcing different secondary market investors. And we became um, known for really getting outside of that norm. So we can do more than just your traditional FHA conventional jumbo. Um, and we can do it pretty well. Yeah, that's a huge piece is when you start, it's like when we all, hopefully we all watch Shark Tank, right? And they go, mm -hmm. hey, how'd you come up with that uh, you know, product or invention? They're like, we needed this thing. We noticed that it wasn't mm -hmm. out there in the market, so we just created it. And you guys started noticing in your business, wow, you know, in the box of FHA, VA, and, and, and government type loans, the traditional loans, boy, our borrowers are needing whatever that it was. And so mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about the self-employed borrower, because I know that they want to tell our you know favorite Uncle Sam, Oh, I make such a little money, but then they want to tell you we make all this money, but the, <laughs> yeah. the numbers don't jive. <laughs> Absolutely. And they they certainly have been put through the ringer these last two years with, yeah. with COVID and all the overlays that we've seen out there. Um, it's been pretty brutal for the self-employed borrower. But knowing really how to interpret the tax returns, have a really great back and forth relationship with the CPAs um, and understanding the financials. A lot of times we're able to figure out where that income really is and, and keep them fully documented. There are alternative programs, of course, um, that don't require documentation for income. Um, but for the most part, just becoming experts in how to read a tax return and how to work with the CPA. Yes. And and pretty much once you've filed the taxes and you've shown the income or write-offs and all that, it is what it is. So, you know, you, you can't change that, but you might have a bank statement program or you might have a no income a verification program. And that comes with some added risk, but at least you're going to be able to get into the, the loan or get into the home. And so that that is something where maybe even you would sit with the CPA and it would be something where you could help them understand the reason why. Because I would suspect that you to say to a self-employed bar, 
car that has huge cash flow coming in. Oh, you don't qualify because it might be a shock to them, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. Yep. It, it is too. And that's, it's a big point that, you know, especially during current times that with our experience over the last 25 years of being in business, we've had ups and downs in this market throughout that period of time. So our current situation in the industry, even though it's a nuance of, of what's happening, we've been through this before and it's all about pivoting and the things that we learned even back, you know, the early parts of our career and with the company is how to pivot towards the necessary uh, products and needs for the clients. So as you kind of just brought up, uh, one thing that we've pivoted towards over the years is there's really, there really isn't a product that we do not have and don't offer. We have the standard finance, but we do have the non-QM, which is the 24-month bank statements or 12-month bank statements. We actually do have a product with no employment, no income, and no D- DTI requirements, wow. uh, which we're one of the few that do. We have hard money. We have commercial loans. We have small business loan op- opportunities. So that's one thing about working with a company that's been in business this long is through the current turmoil that we're in, we've already been through this, what, four or five times, Abby? Yes. And so at, the, at this time right now, it's just using our past experiencing experiences of how we pivoted in the past and how we pivot now to really make a difference for a client that is self-employed or does, doesn't show the money for one reason or another and knowing how to structure that file and find the best rate and the best product that suits their needs for right now. And that's kind of what we hang our hat on or very you know, proud about is our knowledge in the business throughout the years in being in the situation before and knowing how to come through it and still help our clients. You know, Abby, you had mentioned uh, earlier in the talk about how underwriting really helps structure the loan and and makes the loan go smoother on the front end. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. Yeah. We have a really great dialogue with our underwriters. We've partnered with companies that have a very um, symbiotic relationship between sales and operations. And I think that's a very important quality because there can be a real bottleneck um, in companies that are too heavily weighted in sales or too heavily weighted in underwriting. So, um, you know, they're, they're certainly not doing anything um, illegal, but they will call us and, and work through problems and um, really help us find a solution. We're all like-minded and we're all working towards the close. So if there is a way to get it done, uh, our partners work with us to do that. Uh, and they are really good about guiding us um, through little loopholes and, and ways to get things done. That's a really huge opportunity because when you are known as the company that doesn't try to skirt one around a guideline or, you know, mm-hmm. uh, go in the gray area, then those underwriters appreciate that honesty and then they're willing to go, okay, well, let's try to make it work this way. And then you yeah. take that back to the borrower and yeah. everyone wins. Yep. Yep. I, w- I would agree with you there totally. Like if you just operate within the lines, um, everybody has more respect for you and they certainly go farther for you. They try much harder. Because I'm certain that's, that there's some underwriters that are like, oh, here comes this one, the company again, and let's see what. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, we, we got to double check this uh, this producer because we can't trust them. Right. Sounds right. like, you know, 25 years of experience has really helped you guys build that trust and relationships. It's got to help your clients, ultimately. It does. And I think that's one of the other things that we bring to the table is we've we've stayed pretty small and, you know, as a more boutique type company and we keep the qualities of humanity in the business. So we really genuinely care about our relationships, both with the customers, with our investors, with our employees. Um, We go to great lengths to really fortify all those relationships regularly because they're so important. So Scott, one question that I have for you is probably, you know, as a business development, you know, approach, you can draw on 25 years of experience and some of the wins and losses and lessons learned and take these lessons to your strategic alliances, your realtors, your investors, people that you are actually serving to help them. Yes, the clients and the borrowers, but talk a little bit about some of your networking partners that you guys are able to help make them successful because of what you guys do. Well, that's, I mean, that's a very, 
Thank you for asking that question because that's probably one of the most important parts of our business is the relationships with our, you know, realtor partners or our CFP, you know, uh, partners or our accountant partners. And it all kind of comes back to the reliability that they feel that, you know, by giving that referral in that it's going to get done, it's going to get done properly, it's going to be done on time. And mixed with the other aspect of them knowing that, hey, this isn't a standard client, they need help because of X, we come to mind just because we have that ability and knowledge of and enough deals underneath our belt that we've pretty much seen everything that we are able to massage that deal and or find a product and or a rate that's specific to them. And so I just think that, you know, our our business partners have that faith in us to be able to get it done, uh, you know, for their clients that they're referring in. So. And, and, you know, you normally you hear mortgage lenders say, I work with realtors and that's, that's, you know, standard. You mentioned CFPs. Uh, certified financial planners, and I can kind of look over the fence and go, ooh, I'll bet you that they get referrals for this case, that case. But talk a little bit about the ways you serve your financial planners. What would that look like? Oh, well, the, it's, it's a it's kind of a great thing. Once again, it's, it's us being in business for quite a few years. We have, I, I, I literally need to say, I've got 25 different standard A paper investors, and I've got 25 different non-QM. I've got Seven different construction for primary and or builders, um, hard money. So we have a very vast kind of lineup of offerings. Uh, for instance, for our certified financial planners, the big one that we have is what's called an all-in-one, and it's a first mortgage HELOC. Now, where that pertains and helps our clients, uh, you know, it, from the certified financial planning side is that you can use that equity that is otherwise sitting there dormant. And use that for, you know, that certified financial planner to actually use that equity inside that home for 529s for their kids schooling later on, IRAs, 401ks, planning for that future for retirement. And there's no reason to wait 15, 20 years. Let's get that equity and have it working for you right now rather than down the road. Uh, and that's kind of where we really, with at least with our certified financial planner partners, that they really like putting their clients over to us at least to have a talk and a discussion about it. Because in many cases on this product I was just talking about, we can take a 30-year fixed and make it into where they pay that home off in 12 years. And at the same time, having a lower payment. At the same yeah. time, having that excess money is uh, for them to be able to use for lifestyle enhancement, uh, you know, or once again, investment that, you know, as their profession and, they, you know, their licensing uh, or licensing, excuse me, uh, for them to be able to help grow their, their client's ability for their future. And so that's kind of the relationships we have with the certified financial planners. Yeah. And, you know, I um, know that many, not all, but many financial planners are fiduciaries, which is a legal obligation that they have to their clients to do the right thing for them. So that being said, the fact that you work with several, many, you know, financial planners means that they have trust in the relationship with you or else they could not in all conscious refer to you. So mm -hmm. that's a that's a big gold star by your name just for that fact alone because financial planning is such a regulated industry and being able to offer these creative things like you just mentioned is huge but also it just goes to show you that you've got a proven track record. Correct, and then, and then once again it kind of comes into the two that having a tool belt worth of products that you know that doesn't even count reverse mortgages um, that are really big right now especially with our partners. Um, in, you know, in a recessionary and inflationary time with individuals that are on fixed incomes, it really is a huge option for them to put their clients over to us for a consultation about looking into doing a reverse mortgage because that can eliminate that two to three grand payment that thus, you know, releases the weight from the inflationary and, you know, recessionary kind of weights that's kind of coming, coming down on us right now. So we yeah. have actually had a lot of uptick in that as of recent uh, with those partners. And it, it should be mentioned too, that in these consultations, we don't always recommend financing. If we review everything and don't feel like it's the right thing to do, 
that's what you're going to hear from us. Um, it's not going to end in a transaction every single time. Yes, the lion's share of the time, we can find a good product for them, but we're just as willing to tell them um, if, if what they have set up is actually the best. Uh, so it's just an open, um, nobody has to feel pressure type situation. That's uh, and, and I think that it's easy to say that, but I'll bet you have time and time and time again ex- exercise that and said, yeah. hey, you know what? Um, for what you've told me, it might not be a good idea because. And I think that that engenders such trust and and transparency with your clients, and that that word gets around. You know, if you have mm-hmm. uh, that conversation with a potential borrower that the financial planner referred or the realtor referred, that'll get back to them, and it's like, oh, hey, did you do that deal over there with the guys um, at Able? Oh, no, we didn't because. And they're like, wow, I really appreciate that. They didn't push my client into doing something that wasn't beneficial, and that's just one more, you know notch in your belt. Thank you. Well, um, I know that w- the markets go up, down, and all around. So, you know, refi here, purchase there, rates are up and down. Um, I know that on your website, you advertise and you put your rates out there. And that's kind of a bold move, in my opinion, because a lot mm-hmm. of people like call for today's rates. You just you just put it out there. So talk a little bit about how you advise your clients to assess the rates, because nobody knows what rates you're going to do. They could go up tomorrow, down tomorrow. But what is the methodology behind why you're putting the rates on there and how do you um, – um, discuss that with your clients. Scott, do you want to take that one or you want me to? No, I, no I'm glad. <laughs> uh, well, right now, obviously, is a, is a different time. I, I, we probably really haven't seen anything like the current market since 85, which obviously I was not in the business at the time. And, um, but currently right now, rates are what they are. Um, I think right now there is a current shock to the individuals because they, you know, most people that came into the market over the last eight years have only seen, you know, twos and fours. Yep. No one's, no one's seen it a seven. No one's seen a high six. No one's seen, you know, what could potentially go into dates. No one's seen prime at 6.25 that's getting ready to go up to seven. So, you know, I think it's more of the sticker shock of right now that people over the next few months, they're, they're going to get more accustomed to it. So there's no reason to hide it. Anywhere that you go or look, that's what the rates are. But, you know, typically we are lower than 60%. I'm going to actually say 60 to 80% of the market. And the reason being is because we are a mortgage broker that also has the capabilities for mortgage banking. So we have our own warehouse lines and can close in our, our own names as well. But ultimately, you know, I'm going to blend this into really quick with what you said. We are not a fiduciary, but the way we run our company and the way we think about it is that we are. And the reason yeah. being is because most people that will work for an FDIC or work for what's called a correspondent branching company, what ultimately happens is they're selling a margin. That loan officer is selling a margin for that company, for U.S. Bank, for Wells Fargo, for Chase, or you know some of the, I won't bring anybody's names up, but they're selling a margin for them. Whereas when a client comes to us, we literally due to all of the investors that we have, we literally find and shop the best rate for that client to find them the best deal for the best product that fits their needs right now. And to me, that is a fiduciary because I'm not shoving them into a loan that you know doesn't fit their need or I'm not fitting them into a loan because it's the company's margin where they're yes. going to make money. So you know, it, it rates to me, is they are what they're going to be. But ultimately, as a mortgage broker, I'm going to be lower than, you know, 60 to 80% of the market already right out the bat. So we can offer great service, great turn times, great technology, great rates, great products, and, you know, 25 years of backing of, of knowledge. So... Well, let's wrap up with this because you said something really important there, Scott, that I want to make sure that we highlight, which is if you work for XYZ company and that's all you could offer is their products, you're limited and Mm -hmm. you've got to fit that square peg in the round hole. But you being a broker, you're independent. You can do what's best for the client, for the borrower, and you can go to this lender, this lender, that lender and find what's best for them because it doesn't matter to you. Well, kind of of what I find on that, and I have extensive... uh, knowledge on this correspondent branching side of we didn't get into it but i've also have a different division that grows those companies nationally 
that I, I ran for about 15 years parallel to uh, Able Financial being broker as well. Um, and with that being said, it's it's with a lot of those companies out there, whether it's you know Wells or one of these other companies, it's kind of like you're doing a disservice to your client, to your realtor partner uh, by using them. And the reason being I say that is because you're getting shoved into a loan that may not be for you and you're getting shoved into a rate that they weren't able to shop. So ultimately, it's doing a disservice to the borrower, but it's also doing a disservice to the realtor because they are not allowing, like if they have a higher rate, well, that means the borrower is going to qualify for less of a home. If the borrower qualifies for less of a home, that means the sales price isn't a much, which means the commissions for the real estate agent are lower. So ultimately, ours in our basis that we have is an even playing field that takes care of all parties involved, all the way from our real estate agent partners, all the way to the borrower themselves, and also, you know, to our company. So, you know, once again, that's where I kind of go back to like, it's, I really feel that we do a fiduciary, even though I know it's not, it, we really do look out for the best for the client and for our realtor partners and our, you know, any partners that, you know, refer business into us. Yeah. You might not be held to that, but if you internally mentally hold yourself to that, then your clients and your referral partners and your strategic alliances are getting the very best of what you can offer. So that is a wonderful bar to set. Um, so let's just wrap up with this, uh, Abby and Scott, if someone is listening to this going, you know what? Maybe I'm going to need to learn a little bit more about Able Financial. What's the best way they can reach out and connect with you and learn more? Well, I would say just have them call my cell phone. Uh, I keep it on all the time other than dinner time. Uh, yeah. So would love to hear from anybody that was interested. Uh, I can give you my number, 303-905-0545. Or you can find us on the web or on the internet at www.ablefinancialinc.com or www.applywithafi.com. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast. Brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group. To learn more about the topics mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.coloradorealestateleaders.com.